Welcome to Onslow County Today. I'm your host, Lisa Whitman Grice. And once again, we're out and about in the community. Today, we're at the Onslow County Museum where we are enjoying a little fun in the sun. Today, we have some wonderful guests for you. We'll talk with Melissa Bainey with Onslow County Animal Services about their foster program. We'll also visit with Jennifer Randall about spring programs at our public library and read across America. Do you like green eggs and ham? We'll also talk with Sarah Anders from Onslow County Peers about their parenting program and their awesome outreach. We'll also speak with LaQuisha Cadwallader from Onslow County Park and Recreation about Easter and Spring Break Camp, Silver Arts, and also the Senior Games. There is always something going on at our parks. And finally, we'll visit with Matt Mano with Onslow County Health Department and talk about March as Nutrition Awareness Month, as well as a lot of their programs that help guide us to be a healthier Onslow. As always, we're so glad you're here for Onslow County today. We'll spend a little time at the beach. Welcome back to Onslow County Today. And joining us is a new friend to Onslow County Today, Melissa Bainey Hello. from Onslow County Animal Services. Melissa, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So you have a very important and special role with Animal Services. Tell us about your role as foster coordinator. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to really kind of make that pitch to our viewers about what it means to be a foster uh, parent okay. with animal services and how they can do that and how they can volunteer. But the first thing we want to know is about you. What's your role at animal services? What isn't my role at animal services? <laughs> there you go. Um, first and foremost, they're for the care of the animals. They're to handle the help in public take care of the animals, but the foster coordinating is fun. I take in anything from puppies to kittens to special needs to long-term residents that need a break, need to get out, need some extra special time in a home and not in the cold shelter. Mostly babies, giving them that extra love and time to grow before they can go into their own permanent homes. And that was gonna be my question. You know, obviously our goal is always placement with animal mm -hmm. services, finding that forever home. But of course you had this special role, the sort of bridge role. And you say a lot of times that's because they're too young or they may have some special health concerns yeah. or care concerns before permanent placement. Correct. Majority of them are too young, just okay. babies. Babies that can't do the world by themselves yet. Okay, so this foster parenting home mm -hmm. for these special kitties, puppies, other critters. Sometimes other critters. Sometimes yeah. <laughs> other sweet furry friends. Um, how does one become involved in that? How would one volunteer to be a foster parent for these um, furry friends Tiny who need creatures. some special care? Pretty simple, actually. It is a one-page application right now. You give me your contact information, what you want to help with, whether it is babies, adults, potentially farm animals. We'll get there, we'll see. And it's really just getting you into our system, making sure your home is okay for those to go hang out at, and then we line you up with a pet. You go home that day if you're interested. Any kind of special training, especially, you know, if there's dietary restrictions or feeding assistance that might be needed. How do you all guide folks in that way? Sure. Not 
too much difficulty there. There may be every once in a while requesting medications be given. Okay. And we ask if you're comfortable with that. If you're not comfortable with that, that's okay. We get you an easier foster. Okay. It's really up to what you think you can handle, what you're interested in trying to handle. If you want to take on those bottle babies, we'll teach you how to bottle feed a baby. If you want to take on that special needs pet, we'll teach you what that special needs pet needs. Okay. Majority of the time though, it's nothing too crazy difficult. They just need a couch to crash on. Some they love, just, just give they, them the pet. They just need some love. Yes. They just need some love, that special attention. Now, typically what are you seeing is sort of that duration? Because oftentimes when people want to take in a pet and assist in a foster capacity, mm -hmm. you know, there, there might be, oh, is this four weeks? Mm -hmm. Is this six weeks? What does that look like? I pitch them out when a pet is in need, this is my duration I need for that. Whoever is willing to do that, great. It can be as short as a week just to get that kitten a little plumper for surgery. It can be, you know, four to six weeks if it's a really neonate kitten or puppy that needs a little longer in time. But I'm very upfront and forward about how long you have. And if it is something where you can't do it for that entire six weeks, that's okay. We'll okay. have backups. Now, what about any kind of restrictions? So if I'm, you know, maybe taking in a kitten, you're, you're asking me, oh, do you have other pet-friendly mm -hmm. pets at home? Is that the sort of, what yes. sort of questions do I need to be prepared to answer? Sure. And um, part of our application, we have what animals do you have at home? Are they vaccinated? Are they spayed or neutered? That's an important process for me of placing a pet with you. Do I want to put in an unfixed animal with your unfixed animal? Probably not. Right. Do I want to put a neonate pet that doesn't have vaccines in with your unvaccinated puppy? Not beneficial on both either okay. side. Um, we would ask if you have any small children, if it's an older grumpy dude that doesn't get along with kids. You know, we want to make sure your family's safe too. So you're, you're going to make that, even though this is a temporary placement, you're going to make sure it's still that perfect match. Absolutely. For my pet and the party they're staying with. Absolutely. Now, for the foster uh, families that you've worked with already, mm -hmm. give me a little bit of feedback about how they have felt during being able to offer this and volunteer in this way. I have foster parents begging. As soon as they bring their kitten back and it goes up for adoption and it's adopted and gone, where's my next one? My oh. house is lonely. Where's the next one? It's too quiet. <laughs> it's too quiet. But they, it's also, but they also really realize how important their role is. That yes. This is a temporary placement. Yes. Now, um, where do we get started? Do I call you? Do I show up on the steps there at Animal <laughs> Services off of, you know, Broadhurst? How do I get to you to volunteer? How's the best way? You can show up if you would like. I have paper applications. We have a website. If you go to OnslowCountyAnimalServices.gov, you can fill out an application right on there. You can email me. Um, oh, goodness. You should go to the website. <laughs> go to the website. That'll actually take you through <laughs> Wait so Wait a much. second. Um, or you can call numbers 910-937-1164. Okay. And then you can talk to me directly, and I can send you that email instead. Fantastic. So... Uh, Look at the website first. Website. Also, you all have great social media presence. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I enjoy, personally, I have a beautiful, wonderful um, puppy at home. She's really kind of an old gal. <laughs> but, um, but I love to see on your social those adoptions, those new mm -hmm. adoptions, but also some connection with your foster families. I, I have a friend who fosters. And she loves every minute of good, it, good. every minute of it. So uh, reach out to you, yes, socials, please. website, yes. give you a call. Yes. And the last thing before we leave mm -hmm. is how rewarding is what you do in making those connections? So very rewarding. I love it. I love seeing First, these animals go out, get them out of the shelter, get them into that loving home, start their life now. And I love watching the fosters bring them back to. They have that bittersweet mix of, I don't want to give it up, but I'm ready to send it on. And then they're ready for the next one to keep helping. And last but not least, what does this mean to be able to do this for our community, for Onslow County? 
greatness. It's involving the community in rewarding and just helping. There's so much help out there and there's so many people who want to help and don't know how to help. So fostering is, I think, one of the easiest things. Just, you know, it's that short-term commitment, but you get fulfilled, our pets get fulfilled. You're helping thousands of animals every year. All right, well, Melissa, Thank you for everything that you thank do. You. We want to give that telephone number one more time yes. so you can hear from folks right away yes. who want to volunteer <laughs> and be a foster family for you. 910-937-1164. Melissa, thank you for being here with us Thank today. you for having me. I appreciate it. Welcome back to Onslow County today and joining us is one of our favorite friends, Jennifer Randall from Onslow County Public Library. Jennifer, thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me again. I you know, <laughs> springtime is a very special time in libraries across the country yes. because it is what time of year? It's Read Across America. Month, uh, the month of March, the full month of March is Read Across America month. Um, the first week of March is actually the Read Across America week, and officially the March 2nd is Read Across America Day to highlight Dr. Seuss's birthday, so. You know, always, you know, we, we remember marches gone by when there were lots of cats in the hat and, you yeah. know, thing one and thing two mm -hmm. and all of our favorites. And this has really evolved into something larger than a celebration of just Dr. Seuss's right. birthday, but the idea of reading across America mm -hmm. and what, I don't know, I think it's the rhythm, it's the, the humor yes. of Dr. Seuss that touches all of us. Right, and um, the biggest thing that they wanna showcase um, is the National Education Association that um, dubbed Read Across America Day and Read Across America Week and Read Across America Month back in 1998. And ever since then, they've been building it up and what they really want to showcase is a diversity across the country and the different things that reading brings into our lives because we not, might not be able to travel to different parts of the country, but we can read about those different parts of the country and see what their, um, their areas bring um, to our diversity. And, and it really just showcases that, but it also brings just the fun of reading because reading should be fun and we want to really showcase that reading is fun for kids, for adults, for every age, so. It, um, it is that doorway. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a doorway. Now you all have, while there's not a national theme, you all have adopted a very fun theme for yes. this year's celebration. Yeah. Tell us about it. Um, so our theme this year is uh, the You Can Read Anywhere theme because we want to showcase that you can literally, you can read on the beach, you can read uh, in a car. That's what we're doing today, yeah, we're on we're the reading, beach. Yes, uh, one, of our, one of our favorite places. We live on the coast, so if we don't love the beach, I don't know why we're here really, but, um, <laughs> but we are showcasing uh, different uh, areas of Onslow County that you can read. So we have, uh, we went out to JPD and we were able to film with them reading in a holding cell and reading in a police car. Um, we read with our Jacksonville Fire Department on the fire trucks. We've gone out to um, our Onslow County Government Center and we've read with our county leaders. Oh, that's and awesome. so it was a really great way for not only myself and our um, communications department, Ms. Tori, mm -hmm. to get out into our community and see everybody, but it also helps really bring the community together. And we've had such great responses from everybody that has read and they're very excited to see the final product. So That is going to be so fun I know, it's to really fun. see the end, <laughs> the end product. So read across America. You can read anywhere and you can read any way. It's not necessarily a, a paperback or a hardback paper book. Exactly. Yes. It's all kinds of ways. And the Onslow County Public Library is great with that because we have such a huge uh, resource base for a digital library. Um, if you have not yet, make sure that you're downloading Hoopla and Libby. You get those um, for free using your library card and you can get millions of titles um, at, on your phone, on your tablet, and you can lit quite literally read anywhere and read you can anywhere. listen to those books. You can even read the books. Um, so it's just a really great way to also use our digital resources that we provide through the county. Fantastic. Now, 
Lots more going on this spring. Yes. I mean, we're not even going to talk about, we'll invite you back to come yeah. about summer reading. <laughs> we just want to talk about, because all of the branches have some really fun things going on this spring as well. Yes, we have a jam-packed spring programming list. Um, we definitely do. So at the main branch, obviously, we always have our story times. Well, we have story times throughout all four branches. Um, but main branch, we're bringing back um, our Read Across America Week, and we're going to be doing some take and makes with that. So make sure that they're coming, you know, families are coming and grabbing some of those really great activities. Um, we also have just normal programming. We have our, um, one of our programming assistants is a, she went for vet uh, or animal science is yeah. her major in school. And so she's bringing in critter crafts is what we call it. Yeah. And so she's highlighting a different animal each month. And then the kids get to do a craft and learn more about that specific animal every month. Um, she's, we're also bringing back Lego Club, which is awesome because we have a ton of Legos uh, at the library, believe it or not. Oh, and yeah. So we are going to be bringing back Lego Club, which is just a great way for kids to get into the library and socialize with other kids that love Legos. We are still continuing on with our Reading Dragons, which is a really great program that encourages reading, but it also encourages, you know, a little competitiveness. I was well. going to say, you know, <laughs> when you get those levels and you get, you know, your different dragon and your, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's been fun looking at their images yes. um, that Miss Maya has created, you know, the, the face of these dragons. Yes. It's been really fun. And we've had a really great response from all of our patrons, uh, young and old. Uh, we actually have it available to our um, adult population as well, so it's not just for kids. Um, there's tournaments that happen, so you can actually come in, into the libraries and play on a tournament day where you can use your dragons that you've earned and potentially win a prize for you know, beating out everybody else in their competition. So the more you read, uh, the more dragons that you can, um, can accumulate and the more dragons that you have, the better off you're going to do in your, in your tournament. So who doesn't love a dragon? I know they're, they're really, really cool. great. They're really great. <laughs> so we've got our, we've got our dragons. I know that, um, Miss Jessica and her team, um, down in Sneeds Ferry also have a really special event coming up that they do every year that, um, Jessica introduced. And I think it's fantastic. Tell us a little bit about what she's done. Um, so she is actually introducing, or she introduced, uh, yeah. last year started the black superhero. Uh, events and so that really showcases um, the the diversity that we have right. in our in our world and whether that be with superheroes or just the person sitting next to you and so it really just um, showcases that and so she's going to have a whole event on Saturday March first um, okay. to showcase all of the you know black superheroes that we have and just really showing the love of Marvel and superheroes and how that we can integrate that into our everyday lives. Fantastic. Anything else you want to share with us? Swansboro, Richlands, Maine. Yeah. Um, you all last month had a very special close down the doors, had a big brainstorming training session. Yes. How did you all come out of that special day that you hosted last month? So we came out of that um, invigorated and motivated to create more and to do more in our community because we are one of the last free resources that our community has that they can honestly come in and use our resources for totally for free. Um, we have printing services. Well, you do have to pay for printing right. services. You have but... to pay for that. <laughs> pay, printing and faxing, but that's right. a little different. Right, but using our computers is totally free. Checking out a book is totally free. Getting any of our resources um, is free. We also have NC Works that comes in that allows us to offer um, career you know, training and um, job opportunities for our public. We have AARP that's come to, that has been coming in to do tax preparation for um, our adult services. We have also have um, DSS come in. They've brought our social worker in every Wednesday, and that has just been a godsend for our community because it allows people that might not be able to get to the Consolidated Health Services to be able to come to the library and use um, the DSS worker that comes each Wednesday as a really great resource and we've been able to help a lot of people in our community just by offering that one day a week so we have huge things coming in our library system which is always fabulous and we're always looking to grow and adapt to our community so fantastic now we want to make sure you know people might not you know get everything down that we talked about today but we want to make sure that we direct them to the best 
outlet for information. Yes. So websites, socials, telephone numbers, yes. get us started. So our website is just onzocountync.gov forward slash library. And on there, you're going to find all of our events that are coming up for the next three months. So we um, give our newsletter um, three months um, in advance so that way you can see exactly what's going on for the entirety of the spring. Um, we also have our, if you go onto any of our social medias, we have Instagram and we have Facebook. If you go on there, you just look up the Onslow County Public Library. Make sure you're following us because that's where we um, tend to put up any of our pop-up programs or highlight any of the great programs that we have going on each week. We really love to highlight that. And Miss Tori does an amazing job at making sure that that she is does. always up to date. Um, and you can also call us directly. Uh, the main line for the main library is 910-455-7350. And that will give you a directory to all of our branches as well. Absolutely. Fantastic. Jennifer, it is always so much fun having you. Your audience tends to be pretty specific. You work with yes. our youth and families. Yes. <laughs> what does that mean to you? Um, it is probably, and I tell everybody this, it's my most favorite thing that I do. Um, obviously, I'm a mom, I'm a family woman, that's my number one, but my job is my favorite part of my day. I love going into work every day and being able to really see the families and the little ones and just being able to enhance that joy of reading. And we are the first, you know, we're the first step before they go into school to be able to get them into literacy and um, the joys of reading and socialization because the library is more than just books. It really is. Um, and especially for the little ones and their families um, and for moms and caregivers in general, it's just a really great way to socialize with people that have children the same age and you can get out there and um, you can really meet your new crew and, and your new tribe and that village that you always need when, when raising a child. And so we really do harness a great um, family atmosphere. Fantastic. I have one more really important question. Yes. <laughs> do you like green eggs and ham? Um, I do like them, Sam, I am. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you as always for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Welcome back to Onslow County today. And joining us now is Sarah Anders Good with morning. Onslow County's Peers program. Sarah, thank you for being here. Absolutely. We always like to remind people what Peers is yes. because it's sort of a special creature in for Onslow sure. County. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about your role, okay. some programs that you have coming up, and some um, outreach program that you do because Absolutely. you're not in the office. Yeah. You know, um, we're you're, kind of all over. You're all over. For sure. And we're going to talk about the very special audience that you serve. Mm -hmm. but why that means so much to Onslow County. So the first thing okay. first is, Sarah, you've been with peers about six months you yes, shared with mm -hmm. me. So you're relatively new to yeah. us. So tell us about you and, sure. and what you do for peers. Sure. So I have worked in child welfare in the past. My previous position, I worked for the military in kind of this realm, but just in a military setting. So currently I am the parent educator for peers. So a small little house that we live in in Pierce. So it's a very small team. So my role is to teach parents. Um, we, I teach like 15 different curriculums. We have ongoing curriculums we teach, but I also can do some one-on-one -on -one tailored work with parents as needed. Um, but we also work as a team. So to, not just in my little parent education bubble, I work closely with our adolescent parenting program, child care, and specifically with our outreach team as well. You know, when we think about parenting education, mm -hmm. you know, it's a relatively new idea, yes. right? And, you know, we all sort of think about um, Dr. Spock and yeah. T. Barry Brazelton and all yeah. of the, the what to expect when you're expecting. Yes, 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 yes. And then you go to the hospital and they give you a baby and right. say, go home. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she or he are yours now. Yeah. And yeah. you all really help us yeah. with that transition. Talk about how important it is, because while we would love to think that it's instinctive, right. and some of it is that nurture is oftentimes, oh, just kicks in. 
But, but that, that's just a tiny portion yeah. of raising a human. Yeah, yeah. Talk about why that's so important. It is so important. So I actually last night taught our early childhood nurturing class, and I have some very young parents, um, kind of birth to five months is what we focus on. And these are parents who thought they knew all the things, but they get scared, right? Or they hit a roadblock, or this is first baby, and now we're climbing and walking, and what do I do? I may not have a support system um, right. in the community or my family to teach and guide me. So we're kind of there to bridge those gaps. Um, and it's so important for child development, right? Birth through five is where cognitively all of the things are forming and developing that are so important. So we help parents understand kind of what are those developmental milestones? What things do we need to do that we're to really keep kids safe and healthy? And as partners also with our adolescent uh, parenting program, we have some basic baby care. So we try to cover down on all the things so that mom and dad feel confident right. that they can keep their kids safe and nurtured. And you know, I think that um, when you said, oh, first baby, I've never done this right. before. <laughs> and then you get second baby and they throw you some kind of like curveball yeah. and you're like, your sib didn't do that. Right. So sometimes you're still learning. Yeah. You, just because you've been a mom or a dad, yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean mm -hmm. second time around or third time around, right? right? So it's an ongoing process. Yeah, yeah. I had a conversation with a dad the other night where he's, my little one wants to wear pajama pants and a Batman shirt to the grocery store, but I want to be strict. And, you know, I had that experience with my second child too. And it's like, what swords do we die on? What battles are we going to have? And when is it sh we're just going to try to positively parent? So, yeah, right. there's always a loop, right? And a Batman t-shirt's awesome right? for the grocery right? store. Right, right, So, cares? you know, it is, it is the, that also that balance, Yeah. right? Um, when is it okay, you know, to just back off a little yeah. bit? Say yeah. it's okay, mm -hmm. you know? Um, you all do so much with our adolescent, you know, yes, our, our very young parents. Um, giving them some confidence mm -hmm. while they themselves are still morphing and evolving mm -hmm. a little bit too. Talk about how you are helping grow them into yeah. the adults that they're going to be as well. Absolutely. So we have two different roles. In my role, I certainly have some adult parents who are still babies, right? Um, so kind of empowering them. We have some stress and anger classes. We do some one-on-one -on -one triple P where we help with specific things and then really give them some tools like mindfulness, stress management. We also have a wonderful adolescent parenting team that does parents as teachers with some of our young moms and dads. Um, they, it's not just the parenting piece, but they also help with resources, helping them continue school um, and help them achieve some of their future goals so that they're comfortable in themselves. Right, this, was, this is a detour, but not yeah. the end of the road. Absolutely. Now, you all have been doing so much recently with resiliency training yes, and our, you know, everybody being very aware of what that means mm -hmm. and our, our ACEs scores and how that impacts who we are. Mm -hmm. And you're taking these ideas out into the community as well, this community engagement piece. We always tend, and we do, when we think about peers, we think about that precious little house. Yep. <laughs> but you're not just at that sweet yeah, house with that fun fence. Yeah. You're yeah. out and about too. Yeah. Talk us a little bit, of, talk to us about your um, outreach activities. Sure, so in the 1970s, there was a study done, the ACEs study that um, these doctors found out that adverse childhood experiences, so basically childhood trauma, anything from, this is not just abuse and neglect, it's also right. divorce, um, alcoholism, certain things. So we're really out in the community um, and have been for several years where we can do professional development trainings where we're, we're informing professionals on what this looks like, right? Like if you work with children in the school system, even law enforcement, right? Like what does this look like and how do we help individuals kind of heal their trauma? so that they can be better providers or help their children, or if it's specific children you're dealing with in the school system, how do we identify these things? And then how do we get them to the right service? So Piers is also, yeah, we're working on that. We're in every place. <laughs> you're, but you're, you're at that foundational moment. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, and we've really adopted that language now of not what's wrong with you, but what happened? Yes. Hey, buddy. Let, yeah. Let's get to this yeah. and let's figure out a way through this together. Yeah. yeah, what's really beautiful too in peers is to see these parents who come in and we do this resilience training with parents and they freak out, right? But then it's us kind of going, we all have this. That's why we're here. And, and sometimes we need to look at ourselves and heal 
and it'll help us be better parents mm -hmm. and in the community for sure. Absolutely. So work in progress. Uh, but isn't everything, right? right. You know, yeah. we, we say that, you know, there are hours from zero to 18, but they're always hours, right? right? Yeah. And, yeah. and it's, it's that skill set. And even, I mean, as you mentioned, some of us in our community don't have our village mm -hmm. of a family, maybe we're far removed from it, we're, maybe we're attached to the military in some capacity and we've left mm -hmm. mom and dad and grandma and aunts and uncles in wherever mm -hmm. and, and we have to create a new village. And you all are so much a part of that. Absolutely. I'd love for you to talk about how rewarding it is to know that you're, you're filling in, you're, you're filling those voids. Yeah, I think it's incredibly rewarding. Um, another piece that's very rewarding on top of the things I talk about was our outreach, right? Yeah. Is that we, um, we provide the community with um, kind of some different resources from pack and plays, car seats. We have a uh, formula, baby food, sorry, it's a lot of things. <laughs> formula, sure, baby sure, food. No. Um, hygiene items, um, Samantha Withrow does a wonderful job with our outreach. And also we have a diaper bank on Wednesdays. Yeah, that's. Um, we went from eight to eight. So being able to provide, be that village, right? To kind of fill every gap that we see and help families is, is extremely rewarding. Yeah. Uh, you know, the idea of a diaper bank, when you think about how many diapers that they yeah. go through until that they are, you know, potty trained, you know, three years old, you know, yeah. what that's, that's a lot of diapers, 365 days a year for three years mm -hmm. is a tremendous amount. Mm -hmm. And you all, again, help fill that void, mm -hmm. help fill that void. Mm -hmm. um, you've been with uh, Pierce for six months yes, now. Talk about the relationships that you've built with your families. Um, they're pretty incredible. So it's not just in my classroom, right? It's I sit, my office is right up front with our outreach partner. Um, and it's that seeing those moms come in and, and they're frazzled right in the beginning when they engage in, in setting their kid up for respite childcare, they come in for a service and then seeing them over time, right? Kind of grow. Last night I had a couple who you can just tell the energy is calmer, right? Because we've worked as a team with them collaboratively and kind of given them some skills that they feel more confident. It's very incredible, yeah. And ultimately it's about the family and the child and building that strength right. and that resiliency. Yeah. 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 Now, if folks want to know more, maybe I, you know, maybe I have a, a, a young neighbor who I think might benefit yeah. from this, or I'm a, a parent watching this and thinking, oh, I didn't know. How do I reach you? Sure, so they here. can just come on into our little house. We're at 151 Cheney Avenue in downtown, um, or they can call us, 910-333-9725, or go to our website. It's, you could just Google Onslow County Pierce. <laughs> Onslow, Onslow yeah. County Pierce. Yeah. You all have got some fun things coming up. Yes, Certainly you've got Cherish the Child yes. coming up in yes. April, too. Mm -hmm. We want to plant that seed yeah. um, coming up. Yeah. And um, not long ago, just a couple of months ago, you had your annual yes. masquerade, yeah, it was a lot masking, of fun. you know, yeah. um, it was always so fun to watch. Yeah. Again, we are so grateful to you and what you do for our children. Thank you. If you had something that you wanted to share about the beauty and value of peers, mm -hmm. what would you say? I think the beautiful part is our team is like a family and we you can feel that and it gets extended to the community. Um, and we're grateful to be able to, to be here and really protect and keep kids safe and, and empower families. Thank you so yeah, much, Sarah, thank for you. all that you do. Yeah, thank you so much. Welcome back to Onslow County today. And we are welcoming back LaQuisha Cadwallader from Onslow County Park and Rec. We haven't seen you in a minute. It's been a little while. I'm so glad you're back. <laughs> I'm glad to be back. But... That is not to say you have not been busy. Friend, I'm exhausted <laughs> thinking about all that you've accomplished recently. Yes, ma'am. And I really still wanna once again applaud the efforts of you and your folks and all the work you did at the Black History Celebration last month. Thank you. It thank was you. just heartwarming to be part of that. So thank you for all yes, that you did. Thank you. But spring has sprung. And you all have got a lot on the calendar coming forward. We do. We so do. let's start with spring break 
camp. Mm -hmm. Our kiddos get out of school at the end of the month for a whole week here in Onslow County. And you have a camp set up for us. We do. We're very excited for ages 5 through 12 at Heinz Farm Park um, for that last week in March for spring break. We have a bunch of spring activities, crafts, some field trips, all that fun stuff um, to give them something to do while they're out of school. You know, I think that that's um, that staying engaged. We're not mm -hmm. just at home. We're not just, you know, um, on our devices. That's right. And we're still seeing our buddies and our friends and still staying busy. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we're going to keep them busy, but with nature and with some arts and crafts and just being involved with their friends. Fantastic. Now it is for zero, uh, not zero, so it's for five to 12 year olds. Mm -hmm. What's the fee and what does that include and what should we do to prepare? It's $90 for the week per child. Um, that includes your field trip fees. So we're planning some field trips to Wild Child. We're planning some field trips maybe to Roller City, the museum. Yes. Um, we're planning all those things and those field trip fees are included. Um, you will need to bring a lunch, two snacks, and a water bottle. Um, like I said, there'll be plenty of arts and crafts, plenty of activities, games outside, and all the fun stuff. Now to sign up, we go to Rec Desk? Yes, ma'am. Onslow.recdesk.com and you can sign up right there. Fill out your liability waiver, registration form in one place. Fantastic. So spring break camp. And then we can't not think about, because you all have had some pretty famous um, Easter bunnies in the past visit Onslow County yes. Park sites. You all are planning once again your, um, your regular Easter egg hunt, mm -hmm. but you've You've given us some very special, wonderful considerations as well with this year's celebration. We have. So on March 23rd, we're going to go around to three of our parks, Onslow Pines Park, Hubert Bypass, and Richland Steed um, from 12 to 2. And we're going to have the Easter Bunny. We're going to have Easter egg hunts for all ages. We're going to have some food trucks, face painting, games, all kind of fun things. And then on March the 24th, we set aside that time um, for our sensory inclusive egg hunt and that is pre-registration, that it's required. Um, so that gives those individuals time to have that space to themselves, to do the egg hunt, and to engage in activities that are on their level. That is awesome. I mean, just the mindfulness and awareness that not, not every kid processes things in the same way, right. and that it's they can still participate, they won't feel excluded, yes. I think is awesome. Um, do we need to pre-register for either of those, the 23rd or the 24th? Or Just for the 24th, for the okay. sensory inclusive one, so we'll know who to um, expect. We're gonna feed them, there won't be food trucks, but we're gonna grill out for the kids for the sensory inclusive, so we'll know how many parents and kids to expect. You will need to pre-register for that. Fantastic. And always such a wonderful spring special event and mm -hmm. you move it around the county so you're at different at our different parks yes well. ma'am we try to reach everybody in the community so they won't have to drive too far but there's something for everybody in the part of the community now on the other side of the house you've also got senior games coming up yes. and this is always such a fun engagement yes competition. Yes, I mean, it it's the Olympics out there. It really is. Let's talk about senior games. I love senior games. I absolutely love it. Um, it's for our seniors ages 50 and wiser. Um, they come out and they compete in all types of events, bocce, cornhole, softball throw, football throw, basketball, standing, running, long jump, all kind of activities. They come and compete together. It's so much fun to watch them just get older, but get more active. And that's, sure. what, that's what it's about. And of course you have got like the sport of the era right now. Pickleball is included in this competition. Yes. Have you ever seen anything like this you know, trend that's taken over the nature. I have not. This <laughs> is huge. I mean, there's t-shirts, there's water bottles, there's everything, all things pickleball. And they love it and very serious about their pickleball. And, and the rules are a little complicated. <laughs> they are a little complicated. I'm not very familiar with all the details of it, but just to watch them and see them engage in pickleball, they know it from head to toe. And um, I have to say, you all have been offering lessons as well to kind of get us all up to speed. Yes, we do lessons through um, a partner tennis block um, at Onslow Pines Park where you can come out and, and learn and you know get taught all those things pickleball so you can be ready for senior games. Senior games, now it's not just games, 
but it's also arts. Yes. And you're really getting those creative juices flowing. Yes, yeah, silver arts, if you can sing, if you can dance, if you can draw, if you can write poetry, essays, literature, we want you to be involved in silver arts. And um, I've seen some of them exhibited through the years. I mean, the wood crafts and yes. jewelry. I mean, it's beautiful. Yes, yes. Very creative seniors we have in Onslow County and surrounding counties. You know, you all serve us all mm -hmm. from Littles and Park Pals to our seniors. Um, talk to me a little bit. Talk to our, our viewers, LaQuisha, about why park and recreation is engaged in such a wide variety. Because people would say, parks, rec, uh, kids sports, and parks, right? <laughs> Not hardly. No, it's so much more than just our parks, you know, things like that. It is, it's all things for all people. We have events for everybody, we have programs for everybody, and we keep in mind diversity, inclusivity, and we just have everything for everyone. And that's, that's our mindset when we program, when we plan, we have the community in mind. Well, that is obvious and it is wonderful. If we want to be engaged in any of these activities, have our kids, you know, attend any of your programs or sign up for activities or participate in senior games, anything that you all do, how do we find out more? You can go to onslow.recdesk.com or go to the website, onslowcountync.gov um, to find all of our information, any events that we have coming up, you can call our office, 910-347-5332, and follow us on Facebook. That's where you're going to find most of our events. Fantastic. Your socials are extraordinary. You feel like you're there. Yes. And you want to be there. Yes. More you importantly, wanna there. you want to be there. You want to be there. Um, <clears throat> if you had a spring wish for folks to join in in Onslow County Park and Recreation activities, what would you want for them to do? Just engage and have fun. Yes. Engage and have fun. Engage and have fun. That's Onslow County. That We're is, ready for yes, you. Yes, that's Parks and Rec. <laughs> oh, look, we should thank you for all that you do. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome back to Onslow County today. And joining us is Matt Mano with the Onslow County Health Department. Matt, welcome back to Onslow County today. It's always great to be here. So March is a very special awareness and recognition month. And this is all part of Health Department's wheelhouse. Yes. Tell us about Nutrition Awareness Month. Yes, so we have National Nutrition Awareness Month. So of course, it's the whole month of celebrating nutrition. Um, what should we eat? What's healthy for us? Um, and of course, we have programs that we offer for free to the community. Um, and we have three, three programs, mainly two, that our health educators um, do throughout the community virtually as well. And it really is nutrition and wellness and com completely geared around that. You know, Matt, one of the things is people would you know, think about is, well, how do they decide that these are important programs to offer in Onslow County? Is this random? Is this driven by data? Why, for example, are we doing diabetes education? Yes. You know, where does it, this come from? If, if anybody knows anything about the health department, everything is data driven. So we do um, our triennial community health needs assessment. So we, every three years, we survey the community, we do focus groups, we look at our secondary data, and we see what are the health priorities of the community. And so we'll actually be starting our next one in 2024. We're, we've kicked it We're off here. already, yeah. So we have a community health improvement plans that we put in place to kind of help drive some of the health improvements throughout the county. And one of those is healthy living. And so we have our Healthy for Life program within that health improvement plan. Um, healthy for Life is available to anybody free of, free of charge. It's a program that's done by the American Heart Association and our health educators do it virtually. Um, they do it once a month and people can jump on at any point, uh, different topics each month. So March, very beginning of March, we're kicking off um, getting your kids in the kitchen and oh, helping fun. them cook with you. Awesome. <laughs> and do, doing nutritious stuff too. And so if you're like my kids and they do any type of baking, they love to just stick their finger in the sugar and eat it. And so, <laughs> you know, we try to avoid those habits. <laughs> right. Um, so, so March will be a fun one, but then April, the beginning of April, we also kick off um, healthy eating and food and your health. And so they're gonna be covering blood sugar and cholesterol. So All it's gonna right. be exciting. <laughs> and, and you know, we've had these conversations, you know, in the past about 
how you try and create not a mindset of scarcity and deprivation, but always the reward and and adding things in and your, and choices. Exactly, exactly. So we're not we're not expecting a complete overnight change, you know, with the click of a button, with one session, we know that that's, that's not going to happen. And so it's those things where we can introduce different types of healthier foods with the, within the foods that we're still eating even. Um, another program that we do, you had mentioned diabetes, and we have a diabetes prevention program that we do. And that's, that's when it's a year-long cohort. And so it's 12 months, you're with the same people um, each session. So it starts off weekly for three months, then it goes uh, bi-weekly for three months, and then you're in what we call maintenance mode. So that's for six months you're doing monthly sessions. And so you're with the same people, it kind of helps with accountability, you're tracking your physical activity, um, you're tracking the foods if you want, and you're tracking your weight, you're learning in each of these sessions types of foods, you're learning what carbohydrates are, you're learning about cholesterol and blood sugar like I mentioned, um, you're also learning why physical activity is important. So the diabetes prevention program, it's a little more specific. It's not open to everybody. There are eligibility requirements, um, but it is still a free program offered as well. One of those requirements are pre-diabetes diagnosis by your doctor, or the CDC also has an, an, a self-assessment that you can take. So okay. you take the self-assessment on, on the website, and then it determines you know, if you score so high, you're eligible for the program. Um, so it's essentially a lifestyle change program. So the diabetes prevention program is something that we really want to help people change habits, become healthier, start a little more physical activity, and start reversing those numbers before they hit type 2 diabetes. There you go, and become perhaps insulin dependent. And, right. And really have some very traumatic health exactly. concerns. So you're, you're helping us nip that in the bud. Right. We want, yep, we want to nip it, reverse it create a healthier habit. <laughs> Fantastic. I love the idea of the, the kids in the kitchen. Yes. I, I need to know a little bit more about that though, Matt. Tell us because there's, um, there's nothing more fun and there's nothing a little messier. So be prepared, right, for mess. Absolutely. But you're setting the tone for how children may eat the rest of their lives. Yes. And that can be one of the hardest habits as a parent I know if you've been to work all day, you want to go home, make dinner, you're, you're already stressed, you're trying, you're trying to relax, and getting a kid in the kitchen can be stressful. Like you right. said, you, you have to anticipate a mess. You just have to know that de depending on what you're cooking, you might have a mess. Just lean in. And exactly, exactly. <laughs> let, let them get a little messy. Um, let them help cook whatever you're doing for dinner. Of course, if you have young kids and maybe you're making a salad, help them add the ingredients, help them add the shredded carrots to the lettuce and maybe onion or whatever you throw in your salad. If there's cold prep, help them do that. It's a little safer than getting near the oven right. or the stove. If you have your older kids, you know, you, if you trust them with a butter knife or maybe a sharper knife, depending on how old they are, they can help chop up some stuff. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be, you know, five-star restaurant quality, but they're going to love it because they're a part of it. And so they're going to love what they're creating because they've created it. So even if you're throwing some broccoli into it, if they've helped break up that broccoli or they've helped rinse it off, they're going to have a little more buy-in to it because, because they were part of the creation. Fantastic. This is about big picture, the health and well-being of Onslow Countyans. Yes. Talk about how important, how that drives the mission of the health department. Absolutely. So <clears throat> with all the programs that we do, of course, it's, it's our goal to help change these habits. And so we have, we have lots of programs. Health education is a big part of the health department. And so we want to help change habits, lifestyles. We want to help make people healthier. But you know, we still offer our clinical services as well, immunizations, child health, um, communicable disease, all that stuff. And so another part with Nutrition Month is our WIC program. We, we have our Women, Infant, and Children program that we do as well. And so that offers nutritional assistance, breastfeeding education, so that we have our infants, children, and women healthy as well. They're getting the nutrition that they need. And so kind of driving some of that home, Onslow County is a great place to be. We're, we're on the beach, we have, we have forests, we have hiking trails, we have a lot of opportunities to, to get out there, to be active. Um, we also have indoor opportunities too. You know, there's quite a few different activities, going to the museum, we have a children's museum, we have um, trampoline parks, all sorts of things. So those rainy day activities to be able to get out there, be with your kids, to be by yourself, put your earphones in, 
go for a walk, anything like that, Onslow County, we have the place to do it. And on our website, we have an active in Onslow map. So That's we have a awesome. few departments that have helped jump into that. And so if you're looking for a place to launch your kayak, or if you're just looking for a place to do some sports, or if you're looking for a place to hike, you can really kind of filter that out and hone it into really what you want to do outside to be able to get active. And then, you know, in the nutrition side of the house, the work that you all do and have done with um, our Cooperative Extension Office and the Farmer's Market, I mean, your WIC program and the partnership there. Yes. So, so many opportunities for collaboration. Um, and you all are, are such a hub Absolutely. of that. And, and one of those collaborations as well, the Cooperative Extension, as well as the Health Department, does a program called Faithful Families. And again, it's another nutrition and wellness program. Um, it's geared towards faith-based organizations, so our churches around um, different ministries. It's a nine-week program, and it's essentially teaching, again, your, your healthy habits in cooking, getting your water intake, physical activity, um, everything rolled into it, but it takes place um, on site at the church or wherever the location is. And then it also has a lay leader from that organization. Okay. So um, that lay leader does the spiritual aspect, and then we bring in the health educators to be able to teach on the nutritional aspect as well. That idea of partnerships yes. and, and being out in the community and seeing our health department lead the way is fantastic. You lead the way in another way. And when we talk about accountability or we talk about modeling, I have never seen a department practice what they preach as much as your communications team. <laughs> you all are out walking, you're out in the community. I just have to applaud those we, efforts. We were fortunate to have a loop that is 15 minutes. So we, we get our breaks and if we need to just go get that walk, get that physical activity, we should be getting 30 minutes a day. So that's what we strive for. <laughs> you all are leading by example. So thank you for that Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Matt, if we want to give folks all of this information or get them to the best resources, direct us, how do we find out more? Absolutely. Social media, of course, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, X, and LinkedIn as well. And then our website, onslowcountync.gov slash health. And then you can also give us a call too, 910-347-2154. Fantastic. Matt Mano, it is always a joy to have you with it's us. Great being here. And thank you for helping us lead the way to a healthier Onslow. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us for Onslow County today. And a special thank you to the Onslow County Museum for letting us hang out at the beach. We also want to say a very special thank you to each of our guests, Melissa Bainey with Onslow County Animal Services, Jennifer Randall with the Onslow County Public Library, Sarah Anders with Onslow County Peers, LaQuisha Cadwallader with Park and Recreation, and Matt Mano from the Health Department. Spring is springing out there, and it's a beautiful day to get out and explore your Onslow County today.